So today it's time to talk about another instrument of ours. It's called slapstick. So as a former drummer, I had this idea. It was a long time ago that I played drums, but nowadays when I do nothing else, I'm just drumming with my fingers and I'm building patterns without thinking about it. And I'm so freaking good at it. So I had this idea, if I can make an instrument that I actually play with my fingers, then I would be the freaking best in the world on this instrument. So we'll see if that will be the truth as well. But you also like to stand in the front of the stage. Yeah, and that's kind of difficult when you're a drummer. Yeah, you're not seen at all behind all the drums, hiding. So if we could combine these two ideas, then it would be just the perfect instrument, I guess. When we start to build an instrument, the first thing we do is to actually look around in our home and the studio if we have any material that will suit what we have in our minds. So I was looking around at our home and in the studio for materials and I found this log that we had from another idea. And this wooden log actually come from this town, Jävle. Uh, I found it on the lane beside the streets. They had cut down lots of trees, which they do all the time in this city. I have no idea why. Uh, but actually, I found this one and I thought, I'm going to build something of this one. And I had an idea of building a didgeridoo, actually. And I mean... As we live in Sweden, we don't have any termites that will eat the inside of the log, which makes the instrument. So actually, I, I took this log and I let it lay inside for a year to get dry, so I could work it with it. And peeled off, uh, so it was clean, clean wood like this. And then the idea was to start drilling a hole with a extremely large uh, drill that we had that should actually go all the way here and then we could drill from the other side as well. And this was the idea for, to build this didgeridoo. And if we look here, we can see here's a hole. I came here and then the drill just peeked out and it was destroyed. It would not be a didgeridoo at all. So we had this kind of piece of wood laying around and that's when we start to think about it could be this kind of instrument. A kind of drum set you hang around your neck, like a guitar? Yeah. I guess the first concert we did with this instrument was at Fylkingen in Stockholm. Right. I guess it was kind of special because we had speakers above us where we were standing on the stage and they were tilting down so it was the sound came right above us standing there and it was kind of a sound shower or sonic shower you could say. Yeah, it was really a powerful mayor speaker so we had to stand right in this spot then it was really loud and if we took one step side, then it was gone. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's what, it was kind of a bridge above us and stairs up to the, this bridge yeah. where the speakers were tilting down. I remember. And we had kind of an accident at that concert as well, or after the concert where we were rigging down everything. Yeah, the gig was over. Yeah. yeah. And we have this drum module that is generating the sound from the instrument. And actually, when we were going to put everything into the car, this just fell and crashed to the floor. And, of course, broke after the first gig. 
It was dead. It was dead, and yeah. it was brand new dead. And we had one more gig not about a week later. I think it was three days or something. Two or okay. three days. Yeah, it was very short of time anyway. In instead of just cancelling to perform with the instruments, so we, we got to borrow a similar drum module from a friend. Yeah, right. And on the paper it looked similar, but in reality it didn't sound close to what we wanted. But anyway, it's really saved that gig, so we're really happy that we got to borrow this drum mod module anyway. Yeah, it was, it was a very different kind of sounds. Well, many think that the name of this instrument comes from Charlie Chaplin and slapstick and the fun part about that, but it has not nothing to do with the movie genre at all. No, even though it has kind of a connection, even though it, it is kind of funny, but not in that way. No. It's more inspired by the, the musical instrument, the Chapman's, Chapman stick, uh, that is a string instrument played with the fingers. And that it actually is a stick. Uh, and we thought that, well, we're playing the stick. The thumb is really important for performing with a slap stick. So a slap stick is kind of natural to us. Yeah, like the one that Tony Levin playing. Yeah. Kind of. So when we designed this instrument, we didn't know from the beginning what it was going to look like, how the design were going to be with all these pads. What we knew was that we wanted it to just look like a clean wooden log and with some black pads. We didn't want anything else to be visible like other controllers or as little much technology as possible. Uh, to get a clean lock, which I think we achieved pretty well. So the first thing we did was looking for this log with this size, which we already had. And it had a perfect length. And we knew that we wanted to be able to hang it on just like a guitar. So it's kind of the same size as, as a guitar. And you can hold it like a guitar. And that was the step one. Just place this strap looks and uh, hang it on yourself and feel about how does it feel. The next thing was to decide how are we going to place all these pads because we didn't have any other instruments to look at how to do so we had to kind of design that ourselves which is kind of perfect. So the first thing we did was just placing the hands where it felt natural like this. And we knew that these fingers were kind of strong, these were kind of strong. Also the thumb is kind of strong to hit pads with. And that, then we immediately noticed that, okay, here's the perfect place for this thumb. And what should that sound be? The thumb. It feels pretty natural that it's kind of the bass drum sound. And I mean, even though... The sound is a little bit unusual as a drummer. We still wanted to have a setup of a layout of pads that were felt as natural as a drum kit. And that's why we started with the most important bass drum. It's simple to reach, you have a lot of power with your thumb. And then next thing, what was the next thing a drummer would think about? It's of course the snare drum with the left hand. And then we have the left hand here. So here is the perfect place for a snare drum. And it's a larger pad. Since the snare drum is more important, we're going to use it a lot. And if you think about it, if you have the bass drum and the snare, if you want to do kind of a fill-in, then you use the both hands. And the same thing goes with this instrument as well. So we have a snare drum here as well. 
And since it's a, a large pad, we can use multiple fi fingers to do fill-ins, which is kind of convenient. And then we also thought that, well, I mean, if we can have two hands with a snare, wouldn't it be nice to have two bass drum if we would like to play something like a double bass drum? So we have that one here as well. So then we have four pads for the kick and the snare. What next for a drummer? Yeah, we think of the Hyatt, of course. So we put the Hyatt here. It's a little bit different sound for Hyatt since it's Moneo. And the same thing with the Hyatt. You would like to be able to play with two hands. We have Hyatt there and we have it here. Okay, so there we have the pad for a basic rhythm. What else do we need? I mean, if we switch to a more traditional drum sound, we would like to have three toms. And the same thing with the toms, you need to have two hands to make fill-ins and stuff like that. So we have the toms here as well. And we have a fourth tom. There. But we never use these standard sounds. That is more like Moneo. What else do we have? A drummer would like to be able to play a ride cymbal with the right hand. So here we have it. It's not a drum sound now, but it's played as a ride cymbal as well. And we have these three here as well. Uh, the rest of the pads are kind of extra. So here we have some kind of high percussion. And here we have a really low pitched cymbal as well. And for these three pads, don't have any function at this moment. So we have them for further development because we don't have enough with inputs in the drum trigger. So, all of these pads, when we knew where they were going to be, we just, we just sketch out with a pen on the log and just drill the hole. And after drilling the holes, then it was just a matter of connecting all the holes with a channel here, so we could have all the cabling go through the same channel. All the cables coming from this channel goes into this connector, which also is a SCSI connector, which we used earlier in other instruments. It's cheap and it holds a lot of wires for no money at all. And it goes to this breakout box here, which actually converts the SCSI cable into connectors, TRS connectors, which we connect to the, to the drum module, which is a Roland TD6, which works great for this kind of setup because it has a lot of tuning opportunities for uh, working with crosstalk and problems like that. I mean, that, that is a problem here when you, when you hit one, had all the others vibrate as well a little bit so we're we really have to be able to cancel out this and we can do that with the crosstalk functions in the drum module and all the sounds comes from this module as well so this was it for today and hope to see you in another one bye, bye.